my racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Apex Online Racing YouTube channel where today we continue Season 16 of the AOR Project Cars 2 GT3 League with the penultimate round of the season, round 9, and as you can see we are at Sugo. Tonight is going to be a fairly standard sort of race format, 15 minute qualifying session, an hour long racing action. My name is Yorkie065 and as always throughout this season I have been joined once again in the commentary box by Mashup Matt. Hello man. Good evening Yorkie, good evening everybody. Yes we are now into the business end of the championship and today we have the opportunity to have this season's champion crowned. The, f the top four are all still in contention but Dynamite Alive leads the way so far as you can probably see in the drivers championship and there is a complete possibility that he could be crowned champion today so there's plenty of intrigue to go we've still got the team's championship to keep an eye on all of that is pretty much wrapped up for the v10 gang as we go into qualifying what are you expecting tonight yorki well we're expecting a very tight race there at the top of the field as you're saying and explaining to me just before we went on air Dynamite Alive needs to outscore Strongest Avenger in this race by 33 points. So, uh, if Dynamite Alive was to come in fourth position, Strongest Avenger would need to finish outside of the points, which is the top 20 positions, in order for Dynamite Alive to uh, take the crown here this evening. If Dynamite Alive was to get the race win. Strongest Avenger would need to finish, where would he need to finish? In 8th position or worse, I believe, in order for Dynamite Alive to be crowned the champion here this evening. So that's obviously the top half of the standings that you can see there. There is the second half of the standings. And uh, we've got 31 drivers in total who have championship points on the board but obviously we're only displaying the uh, the 31 drivers the other one driver is B Cliff who has one and a half points to his name but we're into the qualifying session at the moment we're just watching Bo France here in the Mercedes AMG obviously he had a well was on to be for a reasonable result last week at uh, at Spa Francorchamps but uh for him and many others in that race, the race just kind of took a dramatic turn for the worse in the later stages and things just completely unraveled themselves, which has probably contributed to get to uh, where we are with the championship here this evening. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think last week's race, we can pretty much say, compared with the uh, what we had at the Red Bull Ring as well, as definitely one of the most... Uh, action-packed races we've had this season and uh well i'm still trying to get over that race last week it was definitely one where you had to have eyes in the back of your head to keep an eye on but uh no such luck with the conditions this week it is a clean race for these guys as both friends will come across the line for the first man to set a time and an 18 flat that's a pretty quick time considering what i was looking at the qualifying yesterday although yogurt has just blitzed that with a one at 17.4. They're actually, they're all going much quicker than they did in their qualifying session in the social race last night. So the fact that they've actually found some pace overnight pretty much blows a lot of my predictions out of the water at this stage. Yeah, no doubt. Making refinements to the uh, the setups that they've been, uh, been running. Here comes Trip. He comes up through the final corner on the, uh, on the circuit. Happens to be named final corner very appropriate naming that one is quite nice actually looking at the uh, the corner names around the circuit but coming into the first corner now then we come into second corner and then you could probably guess what is coming next in this left hander it is third corner turn four is a bit of a curveball it's called hairpin curve this time round. so uh dropping the numbering or yeah, the numbering system this time around. S-shaped curve comes in at the uh, chicane just there before we come to high point corner. Obviously being quite a high point up on the circuit as uh, 
I think that's WMDR Martin there going for a slight spin. We then come into Rainbow Corner. Don't see any rainbows here, but maybe there is a pot of gold off in the woods on either side of the circuit. We're then on to Backstretch, and this tiny little right-hand kink is called Backstretch Corner. We then come into Horseback Corner, which is this hairpin where the drivers kind of double back on themselves. We then come into SP In, which is this first of two left-handers, the second one being called SP Out. And then we come into 110R, which is the entrance to the final turn. So some interesting names around the circuit here, as uh, Trip has done us a very nice lap around the track. There's a couple of moments where he was looking a little bit loose and a little bit screwy, but he's coming towards the line now. And there he goes across the line and pops himself up into a provisional P13. But he's got 10 more minutes remaining in order to improve on that position. Plenty of time to try and get himself up a little bit higher on the grid ready for tonight's race. Yeah, they must have been bored when they started doing the, the names halfway around the lap for, for those corners. But, uh, well, we're just looking at Strongest Avenger now. He's three tenths off. Uh, Moo's time actually, I completely forgot that Moo had gone to the top, he's found some uh, some pace around this circuit as well. He is still in with a chance of the championship of course, but he needs to outscore Strongest Avenger and Dynamite Life quite considerably as Strongest Avenger aborts his lap to keep himself in fight, in the fight for the championship going into Fuji next week. So a Japanese doubleheader to end the season. Oh, as we've got, that looks like Stefan Carey off in the background. So a couple of drivers just exploring the limits earlier on as Martin's coming towards us now with that windscreen wiper wagon, as it normally does. He was feeling pretty confident yesterday. Let's see what kind of a lap time he can pull out as he comes towards the final corner now. I like that, sh that shot there where they come past the camera. It gives you the sense of the speed of these cars as they uh, scream past you. He's got a couple of his fellow Lamborghini drivers up ahead as he goes over the crest. Let's see, it looks as if it's been a pretty clean lap so far. A 119.3 pops himself up into 18th place. But as you said, Yorkie, there's still a bit of time for these drivers to find a much quicker lap time. Yeah, definitely. And Martin is coming off the back of a, uh, a podium on the last race out at Spa. So... Well, still be very difficult to replicate that because I think conditions very much played into his hands. He's obviously be looking to uh, get another solid result, hopefully up in the top 10 once again. As we're on board with Strongest Avenger at the moment, who's on his uh, outback, possibly just trying to find a little bit of space. And noting that there's uh, a bit of dirt and dust being pulled from the edges of the circuit onto the track already at this stage in the qualifying. No doubt that's going to get worse as we progress through the... Uh, through the race so strongest coming across the start finish line now to begin his lap fubars there in the uh, background in the purple Renault RS01 strongest doing a good job of uh, keeping it within the track limits there making full use of the track as he comes through turn three and up to uh, hairpin curve down into first gear now he comes into the chicane making full use of the curves that is available there on the inside just to try and shave off the extra tenth or two. Then coming into high point corner and now rainbow corner. You can see a bit of that dirt and dust off on the left hand side on the entry to that turn. Could potentially affect the grip for some of the cars. So Strongest has got some uh, space to... I believe that might be Yogurk or Speedy Go up in front of him. One of the two Janetta drivers. He's got the uh, hairpin, the horseback corner done quite nicely now he comes into SP in and now SP out another place where you can start to see the dirt building up just a slight drop of the wheels onto the gravel which may potentially hurt his run but a nice smooth line coming through the long final corner and now up the hill where the Aston Martin will really start to stretch his legs did he just lift out there yeah he it did. Looked like yeah he's jumped back to the pits again as well and maybe he felt that that run he had out of the final corner what well, didn't give him the run that he was looking for, so he's just uh, ducked into the pits. One thing I've noticed with a uh, strongest Avenger, especially watching him last night as well, he's not afraid to ride the curves. The amount of curb, as you said, he took in that uh, first chicane at the start of the lap. I'm, I haven't seen any other driver take as much curb on this track as he does, but it seems to be working well for him so far. He's only three tenths off moves, so there's still a chance for him to snatch pole but um, he's still well ahead of his other 
championship contenders as uh, Dynamite Alive is just behind him in fourth and Lumi in fifth. So Dynamite Alive found a little bit of pace from the social race last night. We're just watching Yogurt now, who was having a little bit of uh, a drifting contest with the kinky one last night as uh, he was <laughs> running in fourth and the kinky one was running pretty much on his own. They were having a little bit of fun last night as he tries to bounce over the curbs. He's got his teammate just in front of him. But not the cleanest run through the chicane for Yogurt, but there was uh, plenty of fun going on between him and uh, the kinky one last night as, uh, as they came towards the end of the race. I think he's pretty chilled out for this race. Well, it looks like Anton's trying to get involved in the uh, drifting action as well in the background there in that uh, white Mercedes AMG. But, uh, yeah, that <laughs> fun and, yeah, having fun with the kinky one in the same sentence doesn't really bode too well for right, some of it? these drivers, <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit of a dodgy one there, but uh, here we've got Stefan Curry. He's uh, got a tiny little bit of damage there to the front left of the car, but that's probably not actually representative of the current state of uh, his Lamborghini for the moment as he was riding the curves and as you noted probably didn't look quite as comfortable riding those curves as uh, Strongest Avenger did potentially something to do with the uh, the car setup and the the overall ride height as uh, quite a few of these modern cars seem to be very low to the ground where all the GT3 cars are to be honest but the um, the older ones probably have a little bit more room in terms of uh, suspension travel and just generally can absorb the curves a little bit better especially with the uh, the rear the big rear diffusers that are there on the uh, the new cars so Stefan's is coming in into the final turn now so he accelerates out the exit of that and up the hill he's starting a, uh, a lap Potentially even uh, completing one. He's in 23rd position at the moment. He does improve on his time, but he's still 23rd position. So I think now he's just starting a flying lap as uh, one of the two V10 gang drivers are coming out. Whether it's Dynamite Alive or Lumi. Didn't quite grab it is Lumi. As uh, Matt does a good job there of cutting the camera across. Just so we pick that one up. Yeah, we've got a ghost car out there at the moment. If you look just behind Lumi, it looks like... Is that one of the Renaults? Uh, yes. Who is it? Let's see if I can find out who that is, actually. It's Tony Clifton's car, from the looks of things. So why would that be ghosting at this stage? Has he lost connection, or...? Uh, no, he'll still be connected. Usually you get a ghost if someone joined the session in progress and the data hasn't been properly shared to everyone else or there's yeah there's some data that hasn't been shared across so I think the way that that will clear is if he returns back to the pit lane or um, if one of the other drivers jumps back to the pits but that shouldn't be an issue when it actually comes to the race although it sounded like a car just absolutely dropped there in revs not entirely sure what one it was but possibly someone going for a spin as uh, Lumi is just beginning a flying lap now yeah, he's seven tenths off Mu at the moment, so he's still in there though, amongst the main championship contenders, which is basically four of the top five. Because looking at where Lumi sits in the championship, um, he hasn't got a chance. It doesn't look mathematically no to win this championship now. So, what do you? Well, uh, not, maybe. Not, What's he got? He's 103 points off the back of his teammate, Dynamite Alive. So is if... It, isn't he 103.5? Uh, no, uh, yes. Does that mean he's out of it then? I'm trying to get this calculation right in my head. Yes. How, how many points are, are still available? 100 104, isn't it? Oh, 104 is left. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, 104 points. So, uh, yeah, he is now unfortunately out of it. <laughs> well, basically, oh, he, it? Needs to, he needs to win the race, set fastest lap, and take pole, and have everyone else retire for him to take the championship. And I think that's in both this race and also the next race. So he's not yes, entirely he out of it, but he, he's not pretty completely. much near enough there, gone, isn't he? Pretty much, yeah. But he'll be looking to finish the season relatively strongly because don't forget his first half of the season, don't forget, was one of the strongest we've seen. He was he was actually second in the championship at one point, wasn't he? So it's not been a bad season by any stretch of the imagination. It, it's that old cliche of a season of two halves, really, for Lumi, hasn't it? 
Oh, excuse me, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, yeah, all the podiums that he got have come from the first half of the season, and then since... Uh, I think it was like the fifth round. He had an 11th for 7th for 10th for 7th, and then last time out, a 23rd. Obviously, we saw him up on uh, up on his door last time out, but yeah, he'll certainly be looking to uh, try and go out with a bit of a bang as uh, Moose still currently holds that provisional P1 to uh, three tenths the strongest Avenger. So we're into the final 30 seconds. Moo is in the pit lane, so he's not going to improve on his lap time. And well, at the moment, he can't improve on his position either. But certainly other drivers can improve their positions and try and leapfrog him. Strongest Avenger should make the line within the remaining 20 seconds to uh, start a new lap as one of the Genetas there. I think that is Yogurt dives off into the pit lane on the right hand side of the track. And indeed, with 12 seconds to go, Strongest Avenger begins his final flying lap. Yogurt. Obviously now in the pits, he's not going to be starting any better than a third position. So eyes turn to Lumi, Dynamite alive, potentially Speedy Go if he can do anything. And of course, this man here, strongest Avenger as to whether they can get either closer to P1, take P1 altogether, or just generally improve on their lap times on both Lumi and Dynamite alive into the pit lane. They haven't improved on their times from uh, when we last saw them. So they'll be starting in fourth or fifth position and no better and strongest avenger he's opted to start from second place he won't improve on his time here comes speedy go to the line though will be he be able to improve on his current fastest lap it doesn't look like that he has so he'll be starting from sixth position fubar has already crossed the line be starting in ninth place Trip is on the back section of the circuit. Not entirely sure if he did cross the line in time or if he's just kind of doing one last full speed flying lap. But either way, at the moment, he's three and a half temps off his previous fastest. So he needs to pull something absolutely magical out the bag coming through this final sector in order to improve on his lap time. It looks like he's the only man out on the circuit as well. So he comes up and opts to dive into the pit lane. Yeah, and a gets a penalty. Oh, he didn't, did he? He did. Oh, right oh, at no. the end there. Uh... Oh, a bit of an anticlimactic finish, but this is your grid then. So, Mu will be starting in pole position with Strongest Avenger starting in second place. Yogurt will start from third with Lumi in fourth, Dynamite alive in fifth, Speedy Go in sixth. Bogue France will be starting in seventh place with eighth going to Alan Fubar. will be starting in ninth with Tony Clifton rounding out your top ten. In 11th then is Andrex, just ahead of the McLaren of As Turbo. Trip qualified 13th, but has a one grace, uh, one place grid penalty. Jack Game behind in 14th, just ahead of the Kinky One by less than a tenth of a second. WMDR Martin in 16th, ahead of Enton. Kirinik 18th, just in front of Cinderfell. Luke 20th, ahead of Nidlap in 21st. Then the Bentley of Gwegwin in 22nd and Stefan Carey at the back and there were a couple of drivers in there with grid penalties also. Yep, so the tail end of the field just been mixed up a little bit. Hopefully we get all 23 drivers into the race session and it looks like that we have. So the drivers just get the usual two minute period of just setting up or making any final adjustments to the car setup and uh, you know, sorting out their pit strategy. They do have to serve a mandatory pit stop here in this race. They don't necessarily need to service the the car in any shape or form. They don't need to change tyres or take on fuel. However, they obviously need to come into the pits, stop in their pit box, and then exit out at some point during the race. Some drivers may opt to do it early to try and get themselves a little bit of clear air and try and play the strategy game. Others will try and go for as long as they possibly can. It's usually the guys at the very front of the field who stay out on track and then those who are kind of looking to hop a position or two kind of in and around 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, uh, kind of up through the top 10. They may opt to go for an earlier stop, especially if someone feels like they're out of position. So we'll keep an eye on Dynamite Alive and possibly also Lumi. Those two drivers may possibly try something a little bit different with the strategy there. But I imagine that the top three will probably go try and go as long as they possibly can. Maybe trying to cover someone else off. But the drivers won't be needing to uh, take on any fuel as they'll be able to do the full race distance within the... Uh, <clears throat> with the one hour 
on that fuel tank and likewise the tyres should also last that distance as well no problem Matt who is your prediction for taking the race win here this evening probably mostly based off of last night's social race well Moo's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works for me here because um yesterday I would have said strongest Avenger all day every day of the week I still have to plump for the Aston Martin driver though he has been very strong around here really i suppose it it's all down to the staff because that double sort of uh, double right hander apex that we've got and all through that first sector it is very very tight in there so it's mainly a case of just surviving the first lap but i wouldn't count out moo normally when moo has a good qualifying he's got good race pace to back it up so I believe it's between those two, but I think you're right. In terms of the two V10 Lamborghinis, if they can get past Yoga quite quickly, they're going to have a say in the, out in the outcome of who wins this race. Yeah, definitely. But also, this is a circuit that is uh, quite suited to the Ginetta as well. So Yoga could potentially go well here. He did look a little bit loose coming out of the third corner. Saw him uh, just kind of sliding into view. But obviously, with him kind of there being... In third position, he's actually in a pretty good spot to uh, leapfrog Strongest Avenger into the uh, the first couple of turns who have the inside line. And also he's got a much better, more direct view of Mu as well when he uh, goes and puts his foot down at the uh, the end of this manual formation lap. So, Jorgurk could be in with a fairly good shout if he can uh, jump Strongest Avenger in the first couple of turns and hold on to the back of Mu. It's just... All depends on their overall pace and obviously the two Lamborghini drivers behind in fourth and fifth position be interesting to see just how they do and then again they're just forming up into the uh, the two by two formation and at the moment they've got uh, they got themselves a little bit muddled up in terms of uh, odds and evens being on the uh, the right and left hand side respectively always the uh, pole sitter will have the inside line going into the first corner, unless it is a corner where uh, you know the significant line is is in the second turn or something like that. But uh, yeah, Mu will be leading the field round now in this two by two formation. A few drivers even a little bit of space as they uh, they roll up towards the start finish line, and very very soon we'll have this penultimate round of season 16 underway so there is a speedo there is the trap map we're just waiting for that green bar in moose tachometer to fill up to 100 percent green which will signify the start of the race yoga is right there underneath the rear wing there we go we're under ray racing not too bad of a start from strongest avenger but he's immediately under threat from yoga just like i said one of the two lamborghinis is very much lurking there as well as they come through the first couple of turns but it looks like strongest has managed to hold the, t the assault from the guys behind off for the moment and in fact yoga's actually lost the position to lumi who immediately goes defensive oh that's uh that's Speedy go hard into the wall and it looks like one of the other drivers as well. I think that's Alan, uh, sorry, Andrax, who's facing backwards and has actually got caught up with uh, one of the, well, it was the Mercedes AMG there, which would be Anton, one of the uh, one of the Lamborghinis, which is Stefan Curry. And then I think it was either Kiranik or the kinky one as uh, one of the Audi R8s. Indeed, it was Kiranik, I think, who's now there towards the back of the field just getting caught up in turn three with some contact with one, one another it looks like Andrax has probably come off the worst in that with that damage wonder what happened to him whether he got tagged round and spun and then got collected by the other drivers or whether it was just a mistake all on his own but Kirinik immediately back onto the uh, rear tail of Gwegwin but speedy go definitely has an awful lot of damages that's Fubar there on the uh, outside of the track looks like he's picked up some damage as well and trying to recover back onto the circuit what a what a disaster for those drivers just through those first few corners as they came out of uh, turn two as Speedy Go is now definitely going to have to jump into the pit lane. It looks like As Turbo's following him in as well. He's had some contact as well. So, well, we saw multiple cars caught up in those two incidents. Uh, here comes Andrex into the pit lane, but what an action packed start. And as you say, Lumi had a really good start. He's up ahead of Yogurk. And now Dynamite Alive's jumped ahead of the Ginetta as well. So those two V10 uh, gang Lamborghinis making up the positions they needed to. Uh, but Moo 
just keeping his advantage now. It's just uh, popped over seven tenths of a second. So, an action-packed start, and all pretty much of the championship contenders are running together. Yep, I can see that here on the screen. But also, one thing that I have noticed is that already the field is quite well strung out. So, this is going to play very nicely into the. Uh, the guys at the front of the field here, possibly the top five, six drivers, especially those who are thinking of potentially trying to make a stop a little bit earlier on than some of the others up in front. Obviously, if they can hold out for, say, another 10 laps or so, the field will be strung out even more. There'll be more spaces and it'll be easier for them to work through the field without losing too much time in trying to physically overtake uh, other cars on the circuit. So. That, uh, that little bit of chaos that we saw there in the first sector of that first lap spaced people out a fair amount. It's created some fairly big and significant gaps, as we can see. At the moment, Dynamite Alive still holding on to his teammate about seven tenths of a second between the two. He's got Yogurt there behind, as we've, uh, as we've observed. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, quite crucial for those two Lamborghinis. Oh, Louis off towards the wall. He's managed to keep it out of the wall, though. That was very good driving and well recovered there whilst uh, doing some grass cutting. And in fact, he's even been able to hold on to the position to uh, and prevent Yogurt from slipping on through, who, for a moment, I thought was going to go and take that fourth position back. Yeah, it looked like he just... I'm just going to see now, because luckily I've got the stream running alongside. I'm going to see if he got on the grass or not on the exit. No, he just, he just bounced it over the curb, actually, and lost the back end as the car came back down onto the racetrack. But as you say, he was very lucky to keep that out of the wall. And Reeves only allow his teammate past. But now let's see if Yoga can get a good run onto the front straight. And I've just noticed that actually Tony Clifton and Jack Game have moved themselves up into seventh and eighth. So they have been the main beneficiaries of all that carnage that happened in the opening two laps. Yeah, definitely. But here comes Yoga trying to make the move on Lumi, looking towards the inside, in towards the first corner. Yoga thinks better of it, though, and holds station for the moment, slotting in behind once again. Do we think that may have been a tactical switch from Lumi to let Dynamite Alive go through for the championship? That was a very risky one if it was, because he had him a lot of chance of taking his teammate off as well. But yeah. I, su I suppose at some point in this race, considering now that, of course, that Lumi didn't qualify on pole his uh, championship chances have now completely evaporated you would have thought considering how much they've worked together this season that you would have seen dynamite alive jump ahead of lumi at some point uh, in this race but uh, it, they're just very lucky they've got both cars still running and uh, yoga now i'm not sure whether he's going to be able to have the pace here to uh, to keep especially with the front two but maybe a chance of a podium is still there just about for the Janetta. Yeah, potentially just looking at the front two as well. Both of them mid 118s on the previous lap. Lumi obviously having a mistake. It was a 120 and a 119 uh, for Yoga. The gap between the, the front two is eight tenths. So nearly a second having uh, run we're on lap five now. So the fourth racing lap. Currently watching Jack Game staring at the back of uh, Tony Clifton as so we're coming on to begin lap six for these two drivers. Things looking fairly neat and tidy for Jack Game coming into the first turn. They're gaining a few car lengths on the back of Tony, but uh, at the moment it's not going to be close enough to uh, make a move. It's, it can be a little bit difficult to overtake around this track, mainly just uh, turn one and. Uh, the horseback corner coming off the back stretch where the uh, the main overtaking opportunities are, but both of them kind of rely on other drivers to make a mistake at some point. Well, that's a lot of drivers have gained a lot of points this season through capitalizing from other other drivers' mistakes. And uh, Jack has got uh, Alan now just uh, coming up behind him as well. I'm just looking down and the field Fubar's with them as well uh, the kinky one actually is up in 11th place so as I said all that uh, drama on lap one is allowing uh, some of the drivers we see that uh, don't normally get towards the top 10 make a little bit of a cameo appearance as uh, I'm just going to jump back to Yogurt now who's just closing in on Lumi a little bit more yeah it'd be a question as to whether those drivers can actually hold on to those positions throughout the remainder of the race obviously we've got a number of drivers who have already served their mandatory pit stop by uh, pitting earlier on 
obviously trying to uh, repair that damage, get it done out of the way and get back out on circuit and just run the remainder of the race out on the track. Here we see WMDR Martin all over the back of Kinky One coming into the first couple of turns, not really able to do anything with it with Kinky One placing his car quite nicely to uh, block any potential moves there. But Martin, he'll be fairly pleased up into uh, up into 12th position. There'll be a number of positions gained for him off the start. He'll be looking to uh, continue making inroads on up the field. But obviously, once he gets past the Kinky One here, he's actually got quite a big gap to uh, Fubar up ahead in 10th place. Yeah, some nine seconds or so he's got to make up. Fubar has already got a uh, a penalty from what I've seen. I'll see what kind of penalty he's got in a second as we just see Martin now not quite close enough to have a go down at the end of the straight. So Fubar's picked up a four second uh, penalty and uh, Enton's also got a penalty of two seconds and Speedy goes running at the back with a one second penalty as well. But these two were having a fairly decent fight last night and they'll be pretty much happy to be sharing the same strip of tarmac as each other. Uh, considering where Martin finished last week compared to the kinky one. But they're both running fairly consistent pace at the moment. And I know, um, speaking to kinky last night, he was uh, very happy with uh, how his car handled uh, during the daylight conditions. Just struggling with a little bit of understeer when it got into the night conditions. So let's see if any setup changes will allow him to keep that pace up. Yeah, definitely. Just having a look at his uh, race results as uh, Martin has a little bit of a look showing his nose down the inside coming into a uh, hairpin curve but not quite able to do anything. Also having a bit of a look coming into the chicane but that's going to be even more difficult to try and pass. Having said that though, the kinky one not the quickest off the exit of the chicane and is still very much defensive to WMDR Martin. So this could be his opportunity if he can get a good run coming off of here but looks like he's lost a car lane for two and the... Uh, the Audi pulling away under acceleration off that corner coming onto the straight. But yeah, Kinky One looking at his results from the uh, over the course of the season. He has certainly been improving the second half much better than the first. Uh, he's got a couple of uh, races that he didn't actually start. But uh, he's recently had a top 10 position. Obviously, he'll be looking to try and get another one at the moment. He's just outside that uh, by one place. But uh, obviously a fair bit off the back of Fubar. We're seeing Yogurt now still hanging on to the back quite nicely of uh, Lumi. And uh, Lumi even holding on to uh, the back of Dynamite alive as well. Yeah, the front two stretching their advantage at the moment. They're in the, well, 119 flat for the pair of them for both Mu and Strongest Avenger. Interestingly, it was uh, the man we're looking at, Yogurt, who was fastest on the previous lap. And nearly half a second to dynamite alive so these two lamborghinis don't look like they've got the pace of the of, of the leaders at the moment but of course we have still got a long long way to go but a four and a half second uh deficit between uh moo and dynamite alive that's pretty big at this stage yeah definitely uh long laps still to go as i was saying but i think we will see a slight change of conditions it looks like the shadows are starting to get a fair bit longer with the uh We've got five times time acceleration here in this race and it started at 4 p.m. in game time. So sun is going to creep down towards the horizon. We're going to see a change of conditions in terms of the, uh, the ambient and track temperatures, which could come into play in the latter stage of the race. But for now, things will stay fairly warm for the drivers and uh, quite nicely manageable. So seeing Alan now, who's uh, behind... Jack game. I, was he not in front previously? No, Alan was catching them. Um, Clifton, Tony Clifton and Jack were ahead early on and uh, Alan's just caught the back of them now. So this fight becoming a four-way scrap with Fubar on the back of them as well. And uh, this group are pretty much on their own at the moment. They're some three seconds behind Boge Franz, but then they've got a 10 second gap back to the kinky one. So. We're all set here for an almighty scrap, I believe, as we know Alan's a pretty fair driver, but Jack can get his elbows out when he wants to. Yeah, as can Tony, who's uh, at the head of the field as well. So be interesting to see whether the gap between uh, Tony and Boge France comes down or whether Jack Game feels that he's got the pace over Tony to uh, try and lead this four-car train back up 
onto the rear of uh, Bosch Ryan to make it a five car train. But obviously, you'll need to try and get past Tony in order to uh, do that at the moment. Not within the striking distance, there's a few car lengths between each car, but none of them looks particularly worried about the fact that they're in this four car train as they're. Uh, they're continuing to circulate around, it looks like on the previous lap, Jack Game was about three tenths of a second quicker as Martin is now within a car length of Kinky One getting the slipstream as he pulls out looking to the inside, is he going to be able to go for the move? It looks like Kinky One was slightly later on the brakes, Martin is there on the inside of these first two turns, two drivers giving each other plenty of space but now Martin's on the outside coming into that third corner but swoops around the outside there kinky one backing out a little bit and letting martin go ahead so now it's martin's turn from that 11th position to try and close up onto the back of the four car train that we were just observing so it's got uh, 12 seconds to fubar up the road mm. that's going to be a bit of a tall order to close up anytime soon but luke is now joining the back of this fight as well so we could have an all audi battle for 12th at the moment um, just keeping an eye on Andrex. He's moved his way back up into 17th place. Of course, he was caught up in that incident on the first lap. And Speedy Go is up into 21st. But there's still plenty of time for those guys to make their way through, of course. As you said, they've already served their mandatory pit stop. But there's a long way to go so far. Just keeping an eye on the gap up the top as well. His strongest Avenger is now just moved to just under... Oh, yeah, just under seven tenths of a second. These two still setting a blistering pace. The only man who's able to keep with them, well, actually saying that, Lumi's just gone roughly the same pace as them. But uh, these two have been the class of the field so far. And is, that is being told by the gap they pulled. Yeah, Yogurk's also there with Lumi as well. Still gap within a second. But I think uh, possibly a little bit of traffic may have come into play there. I think it's Sinterfell in the uh, McLaren who uh, hasn't really held them up too much, but possibly helped uh, Strongest Avenger close up onto uh, Mu by a car length or two. So there's a little bit more dust and dirt being uh, kicked onto the circuit there, going through SPL. Uh, Lumi. Sorry. I was just going to say Lumi was uh, looking to go a little bit wide there as Yogurt was holding a, uh, a tighter line. I was just about to say that probably most of that dirt being kicked up is probably from Strongest Avenger. The amount of times that uh, he sticks that Aston Martin, his wheels onto the grass and in the dirt. I'm surprised he doesn't try rally cross the way he keeps going and the way he likes to drift that car. But uh, it's, it definitely helps him get the lap time, although he set at uh, 20.7 on that last lap. So maybe he dipped his wheels a little bit too much into the dirt that last time around. Yeah, well, actually, he's picked up a, uh, a time penalty on the previous lap, so that would have contributed and... Oh, excuse me, just one second. That time penalty is only one second. So nothing too major for Strongest to worry about at this stage. Uh, obviously, it will probably prefer to be out in the lead with Dynamite Alive there in third position, who uh, is now coming up onto the back of uh, Cinderfell, that bit of lat traffic. I'm sure, and indeed does, hold a wide line to uh, let the next three cars go through. Pretty much unaffected, although Dynamite Alive out wide there on the exit of SPN, which uh, has cost him a few attempts as the gap between himself and his teammate has shrunk down. No doubt the gap between himself and Strongest Avenger will have increased because of that as well. So possibly drivers just pushing a little bit more as uh, Yogex now also got a time penalty as well. Yeah, he's got a one second penalty as well. So yeah, few penalties just starting to rack up but as you say that's not too much of a problem for these drivers at this stage but now this fight for third has now been bunched back up again as you say by that traffic this will give Yogurk a little bit of encouragement as it goes through turn four just clipping the curb a little bit oh and that's dynamite alive very wide over the curbs there he's pushing very hard as well and maybe just pushing a little bit too hard as he now has his teammate and the Janetta behind him as well. But they just seem to be keeping an eye on each other. Yogurk's not moving his car around too much to distract Lumi at the moment. So it seems pretty content just to sit there for the time being and maybe a, a mountain attack a little bit later on. Yeah, certainly. There's no real point in trying to uh, push too hard and possibly cost 
himself a, uh, a poor result in terms of a race finish if he goes for something a little bit risky. Interestingly, this four-way fight has tightened up a little bit. The gap between Tony Clifton at the head of this train and Fubar has decreased, as has the gaps between uh, all the cars in between as well. So uh, this certainly seems to be uh, heating up quite nicely. Seeing all the uh, split times there, just uh, messing about in terms of the leaderboard. I think it's just the drivers possibly going over the, uh, the exit of the uh, pit lane. None of the drivers trying to make any moves as of yet, and they all follow each other through the first few turns, line of stern. Mm, they're very polite to each other at the moment, aren't they? Especially these guys at the front, you know, we were talking about Tony Clifton and uh, Jack Game as well. They'll be looking out to see for a clean race, try and pick up a good point, some good point scoring positions. As Tony there tries to defend from Jack, he may have run a little bit wide over the kerb. But he's going to be very vulnerable now down the straight as Jack dives to the inside. There's a little oh. bit of contact as they go round and Clifton spun. They do make contact and Allen gets caught up in it as well. Well, Jack went for a move down the inside and may have... Oh, well, I don't know what's happened to Tony there. He's just come across uh, Jack game, whether he's got a problem with his wheel or something. No, I can't, I can't tell at the moment. But Jack went for a dive up the inside and I don't know whether there was contact but uh, Tony went round and seems to be having a lot of problems. Uh, it looked like there was contact between the two. It would have been just a slight brush, but that was enough to pitch the two of them into uh, into a spin and then pretty much collect everybody there involved. Uh, apart from, I think Fubar may have got away without any contact. He's obviously now benefited from that greatly and gained three positions in the space of one turn and about 100 metres of a straight. So he's now up into 7th place. Allen's now back down into 10th position after that. So he'll be a little bit frustrated. He's behind Jack Game still. So I think Allen may have waited for Jack Game to come and uh, rejoin back onto the circuit. Possibly if there was a little bit of contact between uh, Allen and Jack Game in trying to avoid the, uh, the incident unfolding in front. But, well, that's worked very nicely in WMDR Martin's hands because he's now up into 8th place. I mean, took the words right around, out of my mouth. I was just noting that Martin has passed a lot of them. Uh, you, it's, it's been a fairly good couple of weeks for Martin, hasn't it? And he's just benefited again, as I, uh, we mentioned earlier on, that a lot of drivers pick up a lot of points due to other, other drivers' mistakes, as Jack very nearly loses it again on the exit of the corner where he was involved in the collision on the previous lap, as Alan now looks to have a look around the outside. It's uh, going to be a little bit tight to get in there. And Jack just about holds on to the position. Little bit of a ragged couple of laps here for Jack. Maybe the pressure's just getting into him a little bit. Yeah, he went for the move on the, on Tony Clifton. Whether there was space there, it looked like there was. It also partly looked like that uh, Jack Gay may have outbraked himself or wasn't quite... 100% settled with the car. It also kind of looked like Tony may have not given enough room. It is quite hard to tell from that camera angle, but here comes Alan. It looks like he's closing up a fair amount under the uh, under the slipstream, but thinks better of it in terms of uh, going for the move and instead follows him on through uh, for the moment. You can certainly see that the, uh, the light levels around the track are certainly decreasing, excuse me, as the, uh, the headlights become a lot more effective. You can see them a fair bit more visibly on the on the ground, but it's battle between the two drivers, helping uh, WMDR Martin out as he's uh, starting to push away, uh, pull away, sorry, and uh, gap these two guys. He has, and I believe we have lost Tony Clifton. It looks like he has retired from the race, so maybe there was a lot more trouble than we first initially thought. So it's a shame for him. Let's jump back then to the battle for third place. And the two Lamborghinis. Still line of stern, so Dynamite... Um, Lumi's ahead of Dynamite oh, Lumi's Live. ahead of him, he is, isn't he? Yes, I could, yeah, uh, Dynamite Live was six tenths of a second slower on that previous lap than Lumi. So, has he let him through? Or has he made a mistake somewhere, I wonder? Possibly. I hadn't seen until now that we just uh, switched to the, these two drivers. But the way Yogurt is still, as you say, right on the back of the two Lamborghinis. As Fubar is the first driver in the... I'd say in the top 10 to actually come in and uh, service mandatory pit stop. There he is, 
stopping and he'll be pulling away in just a second as well you would have thought he's probably repairing some damage at the front of the car so now he gets rolling and underway where is he going to come out in relation to some of the other drivers he's behind Andrex and Trip Andrex now up into 13th position he comes out behind As Turbo as well uh, in 15th is he going to lose the position to Nidalap no he just about manages to squeeze out on track in front of the Lamborghini driver so Nidalap will resume in 17th with Fuba continuing back on with his race out in 16th place yeah, we saw Cinderella in the background as well just coming into the pit lane that's the second time he's been into the pits I believe and uh I'm um, just looking in the background. That's Speedy Go looking to get past Kirinik. He's gone down the inside and he's managed to make the move. Is he going to have a decent drive out of the second corner to take that position cleanly? It looks like it. So Speedy Go moving back up into 18th place. Going to be one hell of a recovery, though, if he wants to get back into that top 10. Yeah, he's got quite a long way to go, but quite a few drivers up in front do still have to serve their mandatory pit stop, so he may be able to gain something potentially there here we see the fringes of the top 10 with uh, Luke B or Luke sorry in uh, 11th position and then uh, the kinky one currently occupying that final top 10 spot so he's uh, pushing on round at the moment to get between the two of them rather small and uh, just a few tenths of a second yeah we're not that far away from uh from night conditions either so that's this is where we'll see whether any of the setup changes these drivers had from last night has taken effect and it's good to see the two the two um audis battling excuse me um jack game is just ahead of them and uh, alan's just uh, got past him as well so when will these guys do you reckon do you think they'll be looking to pit into the night time or pit now and then go through uh, the dark hours I would have thought let's try and unless you're stuck behind someone and you're and you think that you can pass them in terms of the strategy and uh, are much quicker than they are uh, I would just try and run out on the circuit as long as you could possibly go into the night and then try and pit in the uh, in the latter stages of the race uh, well yeah that would be my tactic so Luke may potentially be considering it if he feels that he's quicker than the kinky one, but otherwise he's better to just follow him and let the kinky one see if he can try and close up onto uh, the back of the cars in front. Let's have a look at their pace, actually. They were three tenths, uh, three tenths and four tenths uh, faster than Jack on that previous lap. He's not that far ahead of them, so they could drag each other onto the back of that Lamborghini as well as we have Enton just coming Ooh, out. Oh, strongest Avenger into the pit lane. Oh, well, that is very early. And so, actually, is one of the V10 gangs. That's Dynamite Alive as well. So the top two in the championship already into the pits. Well, this is a lot earlier than we thought they would be. Yeah, and that was a very quick stop by uh, Strongest Avenger as well. Got off the uh, out the grid box quite nicely. He's right there behind uh, Dynamite Alive. He's actually still yet to actually stop in his box, and he does so. Is it going to be a quick stop for Dynamite, or is it going to be held a little bit longer? It looks like that was closer to five seconds, but I think it may have only been two or three for Strongest Avenger. But he now rejoins back onto the circuit. And as I said at the start of the race, where the field has actually spread out quite nicely, it's uh, it's really played into the top five's hands. as They've gone and done this mandatory pit stop and then come out in pretty clear, relatively free air. They have, haven't they? They may try and bait. Well, I, I'm assuming Strongest Avengers trying to bait Mu into into stopping quite quite uh, quickly, isn't he? But it all depends now on this outlap for Strongest Avenger. So let's see now if Mu reacts, or does he feel he has the pace to keep pulling away without having to make his stop so early? Yeah, it'll be interesting. Possibly Mu may be thinking that uh, Strongest Avengers done it too early and going into traffic it entirely depends on how much uh, race visibility Mu has uh, obviously drivers can run things like the uh, the trap map uh, to basically figure out where drivers are coming out in relation to each other how much room they'll have because once they've dropped off the standings or relative board 
on their HUD. They've got no idea as to uh, where the other drivers are, but he will see that Strongest Avenger is in fourth position, actually. So uh, that shouldn't be too much of an issue for him. He's probably just going to now observe that gap and uh, make sure that it's continuing to increase rather than decrease. And if it is starting to decrease, then he may go and opt to dive into the pit lane, as I think Jack Game, indeed he is, peels off into the pit lane off on the right-hand side of the circuit there just ahead of the kinky one and Luke who have obviously now gone through as well as Andrex. Yeah, Andrex making plenty of progress. He's in the mid one minute twenties. Now let's see what kind of lap time Strongest Avenger can hit after a full flying lap. We've got Gwegwin in the pits as well in the Bentley. He will probably be full of confidence even though he's a uh, down in 19th at the moment after his terrific run at Spa last week and is uh, dragging some decent results out of that Bentley. Yeah, this isn't a track that suits the Bentley well, so it, yeah, it's not too particularly surprising to see him down in the, uh, the kind of tail end of the field. It's just the car doesn't really work around this track, doesn't really suit it uh, particularly great. However, then final round at Fuji he may be able to do something there with that car I'll probably suit it a fair bit better but we've now actually got some representative lap times for or a lap time shall I say from strongest Avenger with an 119.4 which is four tenths of a second slower than Mu was on that previous lap so at the moment I imagine the race leader probably not feeling too threatened uh, by strongest Avenger making that earlier pit stop no and he was six tenths slower than Lumi as well so even though Lumi was a few seconds behind, if this pace continues, the Lamborghini driver may well find himself a little bit closer to the strongest Avenger when the pit stops come around. But um, yeah, perhaps he, perhaps strongest Avenger, just trying to influence the race by making the early call and making the other drivers question whether their strategy is the correct one. We'll see now what he's got on his second flying lap out of the pits. He's going to have to dip his play pace as Moo sets at 18.6. Now, that was a very quick time. Let's see what Strongest Avenger has got uh, in his pocket as he comes over the start-finish line right now. And at 18.9. So even though he was almost half a second quicker than his previous lap, still lost four tenths, uh, three tenths or so to Moo. So I think Moo will probably go as long as you thought he might, uh, Yorkie, and maybe go to towards... The, the final 10 laps of this race before making stop. Yeah, definitely. He'll be seeing that in, that gap on the uh, on the standings board on the top left. If he's got it enabled, he'll see that gap increasing. Strongest Avenger could probably also see the gap to Dynamite Alive starting to increase as well. And Lumi's probably playing fairly close attention to it, seeing if he, well, he's got a bit of a gap to try and close up if he wants to leapfrog Strongest Avenger and have an impact on his uh, teammates' championship helping him out there but uh, yeah he's got a bit of work to do as we said so the battle or shall I say our eyes turn to the battle between the kinky one and Luke as they're still following each other line of stern through the chicane at the moment just coming into the back section of the track nice line there by the kinky one nailing the apex whereas uh, Luke was shy from it but uh, both drivers having an all right run there through uh, Rainbow Corner, though. Kinky one pulling out a few car lengths as they came onto the back straight. And obviously, that'll help him out with the uh, remainder of the race. Just a little bit tail happy there coming into Horseback Corner, but uh, nothing too alarming for the Audi driver and uh, basically maintains that gap that he uh, managed to pull out from a good first sector. Yeah, we've just lost someone. I think we've lost Andrex from this race. He was running behind these two, but I think he's just dropped off the leaderboard. So it looks he like has. Andrex is out of this race, unfortunately. Yeah, good spot there. He was working his way back up through the field. Uh, but obviously, well, either something he's had to do in real life because it's not often that he does retire from the race or uh, something fairly significant. Oh, it's a DC. <laughs> Disconnect for Andrex, so... Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably not something that he uh, he voluntarily chose to do. It would be something that is out of his control that has uh, forced that. So that's very unfortunate to uh, see you 
joining the uh, the live chat, Andrex, but thank you for coming and joining the live chat, and thank you everyone else as well for uh, joining us here in the uh, the live stream this evening. Hope you guys are all doing well. I do apologise for not saying hello to you all sooner, uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully you've been enjoying this first half of the race. We've got still 20 laps remaining. So there's still plenty to come from all these drivers. So there's still some battles ongoing out on track that need to be settled. And this is one of them. We've got Trip just ahead of Fuba and Speedy Go behind as well. So a three-way battle then for that 11th place, which they have inherited now that Andrex has sadly vacated due to his uh, disconnect. But fuba has got a good run here. Just needs to stick now to the rear end of that Lamborghini. He's taking a tighter line through the final corner. He can keep on the power. He's going to have a good run now up towards turn one. Trip just coming over to the right hand side. Looks like Trip is diving into the pit lane. Yes, he is. So the Lamborghini is in, and that releases uh, Fubar. And Speedy Go just sticking with him as well. So unfortunately, just been robbed of a three way battle. Although, saying that, that looks like. It's who's that Mu. on the back of them? Oh. Oh, it's Moo coming through to lap them. Okay, I thought there was a there was going to be another three-way battle there, unfortunately. Let's see if Ast Turbo can get in on the action. Yeah, Ast Turbo, three and a half seconds off the back of uh, the two drivers in front, but indeed it is the race leader who just gave a flash of the lights in the background as well. Obviously, one of the two drivers to uh, move out the way who are pretty much locked in battle there. This could potentially play into Strongest Avengers' hands if, uh, if they start to hold up Moo. Obviously, they'll be getting the blue flags and uh, will be needing to get out of the way if they want to avoid picking up a penalty. See that Moo just closing up a little bit as uh, Speedy goes all over the back and trying to figure out a way past Fubar. That's a tight line for Speedy Go going into SP out which could impact, well, the race leader. Now, this is interesting. Fubar backed out to uh, let Speedy go on through, who's getting ever increasingly frustrated with uh, with Speedy go. I think I may have got my driver names mixed up there. So Fubar backed out to let Mu go through. Obviously, ended up letting Speedy go go through, who now lets Mu go through and resumes the position ahead of Fubar. Unravel that one. Well, I'd like to, but Lumi's come into the pit lane, so he, say, he spared my blushes on that one. But that was uh, a little bit messy from uh, from Speedy Go and Fubar uh, down there. So Lumi is in. He was running in second place, but let's see when he comes out relative as uh, to Strongest Avenger, who has just come across the start finish line. So Strongest Avenger moves back ahead of Lumi as he laps. I think that was Stefan Carey in the background. So let's see yeah. where Lumi comes out in relative to his teammate then and there is dynamite alive actually and lumi has oh. got back out ahead did he cross the white line there it looked like he did which uh i think is a penalty of some sort he's got two seconds on his board for the moment he may have gotten away with that one though potentially i don't know it looked very close. It did look like he ended up straddling that uh, that white exit line. But, uh, yeah, he's managed to come out ahead of his teammate for now by 1.4 seconds. He's three and a half seconds off the back of Strongest Avenger, who's uh, got a two-second penalty, but Lumi has a one-second penalty as well. So, excuse me. So all Dynamite Alive really needs to do at this stage is kind of see if he can uh, get back within a second of his teammate. Especially if he goes and does that and runs out wide there. And then uh, that fourth position will be his. Obviously, this is a... Well, it'll be a net third position because Jogurk has yet to uh, make a stop and was behind Lumi at the point of Lumi coming into the pit lane. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of a bit a bit of damage limitation in a way for, uh, for Dynamite Alive in this race this evening. Well, luckily, Andrex is in the chat just telling us... Uh, gets a warning for crossing the line one time uh, but would gain a penalty if he did it again but it doesn't look like he's going to have to make another stop so yeah he's uh, been let off the hook for that one has Lumi as he just laps trip I'm just taking a look at the driver's standings as well because it looks like that uh, Strongest Avenger will probably at the minimum take second place and Dynamite Alive will be 
Will he be being fourth, won't he, after Yogurk Pitts? So he'll still have the championship lead at this rate as they go to Fuji next week. The championship decider, it looks like. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that confirmation, Andrex. It's funny that you've uh, you've confirmed that over the person who uh, who wrote the penalty system for this game. <laughs> With that one, I could quite remember off the top of my head. I do remember that that certainly being the case for practice and qualifying sessions. I just couldn't remember if the race was a straight penalty or if there was a warning beforehand or not. But uh, Luke is into the pit lane. As uh, you're going to spread in some pretty clear air at the moment. 10 seconds, well, yeah, near 10 to 11 seconds off the back of Moo. 16 seconds ahead of uh, of Strongest Avenger. And yeah, just looking down through the grid. WMDR Martins now up into sixth place, but obviously he's yet to make his mandatory pit stop. Same with Allen as well in seventh position. Boge France has been into the pit lane. Kinky one has yet to being go into the pit lane, but Food Foobar and Speedy Go have served their mandatory stop. And uh Yeah, and we've got what, fifteen, sixteen laps remaining in this race? Yeah, still plenty of time and uh Yogurk's not exactly set in the world alike with his lap times at the moment. So I'm wondering whether he will decide to pit and limit the damage and come out behind them. Although he is still carrying on so there's a little bit of um tactics going on here at the moment the speedy go is still trying to make his way through and he's right behind fubar so speedy go going okay he's up into 11th place i said earlier it'd be difficult to crack the top 10 but he may just do it on this on this performance yeah it's right there on the fringe at the moment um how far ahead? Well, the kinky one's actually only just ahead of these uh, these two guys, so it certainly is a, a possibility if you can manage to find a way past Fubar. He's having a look down the inside, coming down this uh, this back stretch for the moment. He's got that inside line. He just needs to outbreak the Renault driver, and it looks like he's managed to do so. Although Fubar's trying to hold it around the outside, Speedy Go has now managed to get himself up back in within the top ten once again. Just turning my attention to uh, Mu up in the lead. He did a 19-4 on that previous lap to uh, Strongest Avengers 19-8. So I don't think Mu is probably feeling too threatened at the moment. I think the number of laps that uh, Mu has had in his favour over the pace that uh, Strongest Avenger has been setting is, uh, yeah, is certainly has the ball swinging into into his court quite nicely. So. Uh, Moo will probably stick it out for uh, quite a bit longer before making his stop, I reckon. This is very reminiscent of his victory at Long Beach, isn't it? Where he controlled the pace out front. Some of the drivers die dove into the... Sorry, I can't even speak English tonight. Went into the pit lane and uh, he managed to maintain his lead. So another very impressive show in uh, from Moo, which will also, also help his championship as well because he's still in with a shout, even though he is... A little bit off um, dynamite alive but yeah this this could just bring him back into championship contention because he's 76.5 points behind we're gonna try try and do a little bit of maths here and see what he needs to maintain his championship fight yeah well obviously the uh, where well, he's got pole position so that's a point there if he comes away with the race win that's 50 points so 51 total and then if he can get fastest lap of the race as well that would be another additional bonus point so obviously he's scoring the maximum or he's on to score the maximum number of points that he possibly can here in this round which obviously do well for his championship to see the kinky one has got a uh, strongest avenger for some company there as, uh, holds up strongest a little bit but then does on the exit let uh, strongest on through going into 110 R they come out up through the final corner and there is Lumi so that gap has actually come down quite a fair amount between himself and strongest Avenger as well uh, yeah 120.3 on the previous lap and 119.6 so that's seven tenths of a second taken out in that gap between the two and well there must have been more time that's been taken out uh, various other places as well yeah, and look at the lap time that Moo is, is setting. He's very comfortable up there in the lead on an 
five. So I think barring any, well, touch wood, this doesn't happen to him, but any sort of uh, mechanical problems with his rig or the game itself, he should be set for victory here. I suppose the battle now turns to second place. Yeah, as uh, Lumi goes and does a little bit of grass cutting out the exit there of uh, Rainbow Corner. Possibly digging for some rainbows and all move is into the pit lane. So he pits with about 13, 12, 13 laps remaining. As he comes in, how quick is his stop going to be? Does his marks and wow, that was certainly less than two seconds, probably a second to a second and a half at most. So a very nice quick stop there for me, which works very nicely into his favour and he's pretty much got the entire start finish straight between himself and strongest Avenger so a nice comfortable lead here coming into uh, this final phase of the race yeah only Yogurt the last of the the front runners to make his stop WMDR Martin still to come into the pit lane as well so yeah Mu back out with a decent 10 second lead that's roughly what he had as a uh, before, oh no, he was 10 seconds ahead of uh, Lumi, wasn't he? So he's made yeah. up a little bit more time there as well. So this has been a very, very good stint for Mu. And with only, what is it, about 12 laps left, he's looking set for victory. But hopefully now we're in. If Yoga can get in amongst this bunch as well, we may have a four-way fight um, for second place. But uh, he's going to have to pull some really quick lap times out to stay with this pack, I believe, when they come into the pit lane. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting to see that the gap is now shrunk to within a second between the strongest Avenger and Lumi. Obviously, if uh, Lumi can get ahead of the Aston Martin driver, it's going to work very nicely into Dynamite Live's uh, hands in terms of the championship. Helping out, take a few points away from strongest and decrease that difference as Yogurk is into the pit lane. And his marks, he's being held a little bit longer than... Uh, than Mu was. There's a flash of lights there, They're looking to get past the lead coordinator who uh, gets out the way going into that first turn, at least I think it was Stefan Curry that they were lapping there. It's still... Yeah, let's just see, that might have been uh, Jack Game actually. Ah uh, yes, good point. Yeah, Stefan yeah. Curry's got the blue accents and you're right, Jack Game has the, uh, the green accents and the Lamborghini, my god that was very close between Trip and Stephen Curry. This is a battle for position, and in fact, this is actually a four-way fight. Oh, God. That was uh, Stephen Curry there bouncing up onto two wheels. Is that a four-way fight? It is a four-way fight, as uh, Luke has just gone and let Trip on through, and those positions that do have just changed. Yeah, <laughs> I think his stomach ended up in your mouth then, didn't it? it yeah, like yeah. Toward, towards the curbs. But, uh, oh, actually, hang on. Lumi's ahead. Oh, wow. We look away for one moment and uh, the drivers oh, they? in second and third position go and swap places. Is that a mistake by Strongest Avenger, do we reckon? Or, well, I, I very much doubt he's going to let Lumi on through, but uh, Lumi may have just gone for a desperate lunge and uh, gained that position. He's going defensive. Two Strongest coming into the braking zone for the first turn. He's going to be on the tighter line, which could work in Strongest favour coming through the second and third turn but you can just see the grip that the Lamborghini has he's managed to pull out a couple of car lengths quite visibly there and now Strongest Avengers a little bit on the back foot he's not quite got the points over uh, Dynamite Alive that he would have been looking to uh, try and claim here in this race so he needs to keep on the back of that Lamborghini in front of him see if he can try and pass Lumi again in these uh, these final nine laps or so. Looking at the lap time, he was a second slower than Lumi the last time around. So as you said, York, he may have made a mistake somewhere and allowed uh, the Lamborghini through. But yeah, as you say, this plays into Dynamite Alive's hands. Yes, he's going to lose some points to Strongest Avenger. But one thing I have noticed, and especially last night, Strongest Avenger really likes the setup of this car when it's running in clear air. He's got no one ahead of him and he can put the lap time down. He has struggled a few times this season when he's been running behind another car to actually get close so let's see if he can stay with Lumi because it looks as if that Lamborghini is just able to stretch its legs a little bit yeah but it's it's here that the Aston Martin is able to stretch his legs and as you can see he's gained a 10-4-2 coming 
coming into the braking zone for that first corner. He just, as you say, needs to hold it around the rest of the lap to kind of be there and uh, make a move happen later on. Uh, how close is Jorgo off the back of Dynamite Alive at the moment? The timing screens are a little bit all over the place. It looks to be about a second and a half. There you can see as well, confirmed by the uh, the Delta at the top of the screen. So, uh, yeah, not a bad stop for for Jorgo. He's lost a little bit of ground to the two Lamborghinis, but not a huge amount. He's not completely out of the picture. And Trips just had a... Uh a bit of a moment into the gravel there, just saw that he dropped behind Stefan Carey. So he's been off the track, sadly. And so that four-way fight that we had between... Oh, Luke's a little bit further back than I thought he was, but there was a three-way fight there. The kinky one, Stefan Carey and Trip were all in amongst each other, but don't know what happened to the red Lamborghini, but it ended up in the gravel trap. So a shame that. We were looking forward to a three-way scrap, but there's still plenty of fight left in that uh, battle for second as you said the strongest avenger is now dropped to over a second behind so that straight line speed that he's getting down the front straight is completely being outdone by the grip of that lamborghini it seems yeah certainly obviously that straight that start finish straight is only what a 10 percent portion of the circuit whereas the other 90 percent is made up of much much shorter straights where the aston martin won't be able to stretch its legs and as you say a series of corners where it probably isn't as strong as the lamborghini so that's all real kind of factors that the drivers would have had to uh kind of apply to their setup and the decision as to what kind of direction they go do they try to maximize say their straight line speed or do they basically play to the majority of the track and uh, its characteristics in terms of going for something that's higher downforce and is going to work better in the corners so oh uh, ooh, 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 ooh. interesting stuff Luby's got a five second penalty where strongest has only got a one second penalty so strongest just needs to hold within a four second gap to Lumi in second place and he's going to retake that second position no wonder Lumi's probably pushing hard and Strongest Avenger's not too worried about hanging on to the back of the Lamborghini in front. No, but he can't afford to drop his pace too much, though. He's now two and a half seconds behind. And Dynamite Alive is just uh, getting on to the back of Strongest Avenger as well. So this may actually play into Lumi's hands. If Dynamite Alive can start uh, harassing his uh, championship rival, then Lumi may well get the gap that he needs to to finish second. Yeah, definitely. See that gap, as you say, is coming down as well. And their strongest Avengers picked up another another penalty. And in fact, even Jokic is... Uh, no, the penalties are still the same from when we last looked. But uh, even Jokic is closing up as well. He's got the gap from a second and a half to Dynamite Alive down to a second. So that's five tenths gained on the previous lap. And actually, the majority of that did come on that previous lap. Uh, but, 1.18.9 for Yoga with 1.19.3 for Dynamite Alive. And uh, Move just continuing to mind his own business, not worrying about the drivers behind, setting his own pace. It's almost as if the other guys aren't there on the track at all. No, that's probably one of the best ways to win a race, especially when it comes to the driver's stress levels. You know, noticed when he won at Long Beach, he was pretty much out on his own to, uh, and up until towards the end of the race where he backed off. He certainly likes to win races easily, does Moo, uh, this season. But uh, yeah, he's running very nicely in the high 118s. Lumi a little bit quicker behind him. Strongest Avenger a second slower again on that previous lap. So this is looking good actually for Lumi to have to take the gap that he needs to to finish second. And Strongest Avenger may find himself at the mercy of falling behind these two if he's not careful. Yeah, possibly. Maybe, as Andrex was alluding to in the, uh, the live stream chat, that Strongest Avenger may have gone for a setup that suits the uh, the earlier, lighter conditions of running in the daytime rather than in the night. I was also just thinking uh, what could have been potentially for Mu if uh, he started the double header that we had in, uh, in that first USA race was that uh, at Circuit of Americas that was round three of the championship he didn't start in either of those two 
races in that round. And obviously, well, he's only 76 points off the back of Dynamite Alive. Where he would have been in relation to his competitors if he had uh, partaken in that round. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it looks as if victory is not going to be enough to keep him in the championship fight at this stage. As Dynamite Alive looks now to get past Strongest Avenger and he will absolutely take this result as it stands but if he can get past well that will set himself up beautifully uh, for Fuji as well take a little bit of pressure off him when he will extend his championship lead going into that final round and I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see the Lamborghini actually trying to have a go at the Aston Martin within the next couple of laps because he certainly looks like he's got the pace and is actually quicker than Strongest Avenger by quite some distance at the moment. Strongest really struggling. Yeah, and why not take the uh, take the pun and see if you can make the move. You've got 20 points over your competitor that's ahead of you. If you can uh, take more points away from him, it's going to make it a lot easier going into that final race. Obviously, the risk is you, you uh, have contact between the two cars and then you get placed in front of the stewards and you may potentially get a penalty from that, but at least you kind of had a go at trying to extend the gap a little bit more going into that final round. If it doesn't pay off, you still got a 20 point buffer to work with. Obviously, that's going to come down. But uh, that if you do get a penalty, that is, it will come down. But uh, yeah, it's not too much of an issue. One thing that I am noting, though, is that the gap between Lumi and Strongest Avengers seems to be in and around four and a half to five seconds now. So I think Lumi has got that second position pretty much consolidated and cemented in, providing that he doesn't pick up any more time penalties, and obviously providing that uh, Strongest Avenger doesn't pick up any more time penalties either. Well, as I said, this fight now, Strongest Avenger has got that Lamborghini all over him as they come through the chicane. This is not looking good for the man sitting second in the championship. Will Dynamite Alive fancy a run now down the back straight, takes a much tighter line, gets a little bit squirmy on the throttle, but now he's tucked right in the slipstream as they come down the hill don't forget Yogux just lurking in the background as well will dynamite a life chance went up the inside strongest avenger very late on the brakes and just about covers the inside line dynamite Alive running a little bit wide now oh uh, uh, this is quite tense now because what the strongest do what does dynamite alive do Yogux just sitting there probably anticipating that there may be just a snip of an opportunity for him to snatch that final podium position. There's actually, he's got a good run out of the final corner. Yeah, I was just about to note that the Aston Martin and Lamborghini are probably stronger in different parts of the circuit. I reckon the uh, the Lamborghini's got the measure over the Aston Martin in the first half of the track, and then the second half of the track kind of favours more the, uh, the Aston Martin, especially that final sector leading on to the start-finish straight. But it's here that the Lamborghini is going to be better, and you can see he's closing up on the back of strongest in front of him if you can just hold that kind of gap going through the chicane and then going through high point and rainbow corner it could be in with a chance going down the back straight to try and make a move going into the horseback corner he is right there underneath the rear wing so he is exactly where he will want to be he'll just need a one he'll just need a nice clean run off the exit of this turn and even yogurt has uh, closed up in and tried to uh, pop himself in position to try and make a move but gets caught on the curb on the exit dynamite alive just showing his nose to the inside of strongest avenger who's not phased by the lamborghini presenting his headlights there and holds his line going through so they follow each other for the moment as alan is into the pit lane the service manager pit stop that may have been a brush between the two cars there going through sp in that certainly allowed yogurt to close up who may potentially have a bit of a run here coming into the final corner there's barely anything in between them <laughs> well i say there's barely anything in between them there was nothing in between them for a moment as they made contact going through that final turn and that has gone and put yogurt on the back foot thankfully he's got a 24 and a half to 25 second gap to wmdr martin so he's not going to lose that position there but has obviously dropped them out of contention for this fight for that final podium spot so now it's just basically down but down to strongest avenger and dynamite alive between the two drivers yeah i pity that they just got a little bit too close out of that uh, uh, into that final corner yoga just getting caught out a little bit i'm just gonna see how they how their runs go through here and we're gonna have a quick look at the time penalties as well to make sure the situation hasn't changed Dynamite Alive now tucks back in again under that rear wing of the Aston Martin, runs it out over the kerb, 
Has he got a good enough run down the back straight? The power of that Aston Martin just keeping strongest Avenger ahead for the time being. This would be a late lunge if Dynamite Alive goes for it. And he doesn't, although Strongest Avenger runs a little bit wide over that corner. Let's see now what kind of run Dynamite Alive has through the double left-hander. But this is where the Aston Martin now will start to reap the benefits. Yeah, you can see that gap starting to pull out. I think Dynamite Alive just pulled out the slipstream a little bit too early. Going down that back stretch, which would have hurt him going into the braking zone. There's the penalty check. Oh, Dynamite Alive got three seconds. So even if he does get past Strongest Avenger, he's got a two second gap to try and pull out in order to hold on to that final podium spot. So I think Dynamite Alive may potentially have uh, given up the ghost a little bit with that chase, uh, as that must have come from the last lap or so. Even still, he's probably going to try and pressurize Strongest Avenger a little bit. If he can put maybe even force an error or a mistake from uh, Strongest Avenger, that could work potentially into his favor and give him that two second gap that he needs. Obviously, Yogurk is within that now as well as he's got the gap back down to one second as this is the final lap of the race. Moo will be further up ahead, kind of coming in towards the final sector now, I believe, that White Dot just gone over the T2 line. Dynamite Alive really needs to be tucked into this slipstream here. We do actually have some traffic up ahead who could potentially come into play. WMDR Martin is now into the pit lane to serve his mandatory pit stop. But here is your race leader, Moo, going for the perfect race evening. He took pole position. He's coming over the start-finish line to take the race win. Didn't actually see if he's got the fastest lap of the race, but we'll double-check that later on to see if he picks up the maximum number of points here in this round as, as Lumi comes across the line in second place ahead of his teammate and Strongest Avenger. It's going to be Strongest Avenger holding out for that third position as Dynamite Alive comes across the line in fourth place but will lose that to Yogurk who was within the uh, the penalties that, uh, that Dynamite Alive had there. So Yogurk comes home in fourth, Dynamite Alive in fifth. Speedy Go is going to be the next driver here. We can see him with the uh, the white headlights that just gave a flash to the Audi R8 in front. He'll be the sixth car across the line recovering back into that sixth position after the contact that he had earlier on in the race. That would be a very strong result for him and he'll be very pleased with that after what looked like quite substantial damage after hitting the wall on that opening lap. So here he comes through the final turn very closely followed by uh, Boge France. So Speedy Go will pick up 6th place, providing the penalty isn't too big. Boge France across the line in 7th. And Boge France hops up ahead of Speedy Go. The penalty's there, shuffling those drivers around. And then WMDR Martin comes across the line in P8. He'll be very happy with that after his starting position. But uh, yeah, here is your confirmation of results. And no oh, strongest Avenger pips Moo for the fastest lap of the race. So Moo will come away with 51 points from this round as he picks up the race win and obviously pole position. Lumi picks up second place. Strongest Avenger gets third with fastest lap of the race as well. Yoga comes home in fourth position with Dynamite Live in fifth. Boge France in sixth. Speedy Go in seventh. A good race by WMDR Martin once again for eighth place. Ninth went to Fuba. And then Alan rounds out your top ten. Then Neil McLaren of Ast Turbo in 11th, ahead of uh, Kiranik. Strong result for him in 12th. Jack Game in 13th. The kinky one, I'm sure he'll be pretty happy coming home in 14th. He's ahead of Trip. Stefan Carey also recovering well up, back up into 16th, ahead of Luke. Gwegwin in the Bentley in 18th. Nidlap uh, in 19th. Our final point scorer is Enton in 20th. Sindafel 21st and Tony Clifton uh, ranked 22nd. And of course, we lost Andrek sadly as well. Yeah, very, very unfortunate that. We have a few drivers disconnecting and uh, retiring from the race. But uh, as per usual, with our evenings here on a Wednesday night after these races, we'll go to the driver interviews. We're just waiting for a couple of drivers to actually crawl back into the uh, ready for interview room. And I see Yogurk is up there, although he's actually in the the wrong channel but uh we'll move him into the uh correct room in just a second i'm just rearranging everything in terms of my stream my layout and everything else like that so i can reference back to uh the the final positions and all that stuff and in fact all the drivers who are looking for oh no no they're all in the right 
interview rooms. They got ready for interview one room. Uh, and we got them ready for interview two room. So uh, let's see. We do not have our race leader here in the uh, in the ready for interview room, but we do have second position man Lumi. Lumi, congratulations on P two. A bit of Thank a return to form for yourself. Tell us how yes. your race went. Well, um, at the start, I got in front of Yoguk pretty early, and then I just got the chicane completely wrong, and it sort of sent me off into the grass, and I lost two positions, I think. And then, yeah, I just pushed, and then in, in when it got dark, um, I think, the well, my car, the, the setup was very good like, with those temperatures. So... Yeah, I was a lot quicker than Avenger towards the end. Whereas at the start he was like way quicker, but towards the end we had the better pace. Good stuff. Well, uh, obviously you had a bit of a uh, a difficult second half of the season, as you said, a second position. Good uh, result there. Returning to form, you are unfortunately. Uh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're out of the championship running now. Yeah, are you? Yeah. I'm guessing your eyes are turning to helping your teammate Dynamite alive for the final race of the season at Fuji. Yeah, exactly. Do you have you any... two? You two have worked well um, throughout most of the season. Of course, you've wrapped up the teams' championship as well. Surely, that's something to celebrate as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've 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 got a good little team going. We're, he's a good driver. We're good. I think we quite we work quite well together, and he he gives me um very good setups, so it's a win win. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Do you have any possible tricks up your sleeve for the final race of the season? You guys planning or anything? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It just so, you know we'll, we'll see. We'll see on the day. Good stuff. Well, we look forward to seeing it, and uh, obviously all eyes turn to the next race next week. But uh, thank you very much for coming to chat with us. Congratulations again on second position. Congratulations on yourself and Dynamite for wrapping up the team championship. I mean, you had it pretty much wrapped up anyway coming into this round. But uh, yeah, congratulations on the win thank there. You. Best of luck next cheers, week, man. Guys. Cheers, see ya. All right, cheers, Lumi. Right, so that's one driver down. Let's get our next driver in, if I can navigate him into the correct box. Let's move him there, and let's move him there. Apologies, Yoga, for moving you uh, a bit here, there, and everywhere. Congratulations on uh, on fourth position. Are you pleased with that? Are you Were you hoping for a little bit better, considering you were starting in third position at the beginning of the race? Well, yeah, the first thing I wanted to do was keep the position till the end but I had that runoff and then I dropped down to P5 but uh, the whole race was so intense because I was just catching both the Lambo guys Lumi and Dynamite alive and it just escalated in the last laps with strongest Avenger and Dynamite alive and I was just pushing so hard I thought I was gonna faint <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're certainly uh, ringing out the the best that you could out of that Janetta. Obviously, a circuit that uh, suits the Janetta. Next week, we go to Fuji. How are you feeling going into that round? You feeling like you could? I think the championship is still alive. For no, you, you no, you're out of it. Unfortunately, I just realised you're all 80 points. And although you did close up on uh, on Dynamite Live in this round, it's obviously you haven't negated enough to. Uh, get the race win. Uh, sorry, the championship win. But you could be. Uh, you... No, I think you're out of second position as well. You could still get third. My my target was to get third, but uh, I mean it's gonna be close. That's for sure. We've been pushing that car incredibly well all year. Uh, we go as you go into the final run. How would you sum up this season for you so far? Well, I, I definitely think that this season is better than my first one, season 15, because uh, I, first of all, I'm better and uh, I have a lot of more closer racing with the guys and the Janetta is just awesome to drive. But to get everything out of the car, it's so hard and challenging because I was like most of the time just drifting today in the first corner, first and second corner, just trying to get the most out of the car and it's just... It's like 
I've exceeded the limit of it. So, yeah, I'll probably, if a season 17 happens, I'll probably take a bit of a faster car to see if I can actually challenge for the championship. Uh, you just answered my next question, which was going to be, would you run the Ginetta again or would you go for something different if we did a season 17? But uh, yeah, well, I was going to say congratulations on fourth place this evening. Uh, we'll look to see if you can reclaim that third place going into the final round of the season next week at Fuji. Um, but until then, enjoy the rest of your evening and good night. Good night. Cheers, Yogurt. Right, let's get another driver into the box. Let's get WMDR Martin, 8th position in the end there. That was a uh, a good, clean race from yourself, sir. Tell us how your thoughts and feelings are with regards to that one. I'd say about 90% clean. I think in the second lap I accidentally tapped Kinky, um, which gave him a slight bit of arrow damage, but then I let him back by on the next lap. Um, other than that, I had a pretty good battle with him, and and most of the race was just uh, lapping people and making sure Alan stayed behind. Good stuff. Well, obviously, you had your uh, podium last week, and whilst we thinking that podium was possibly out of reach, another top 10 was definitely possible. You feeling the wave of momentum going into the final round? I'm guessing you'll be looking for another top 10 there. I, I guess a little bit, yeah, because l- last race was uh, just brilliant. Today, I qualified 16th, so pace wasn't really there. Got slightly lucky with the crashes today, but I'd say the race pace was pretty decent as well, so hopefully I can carry that over into the last race. Excellent. I'm just looking to see where Trip finished. He finished in P15, so your gap between the two of you coming into this round was 24 and a half points. Uh, difference between 8th place, which was 16 points, and trip in 15th, 6 or 10, so the gap is now down to 14.5 points. Do you reckon you can snag the top 10 in the Drivers' Championship in that final round? That, that'll be difficult. Uh, I think there's going to be some luck or bad luck in play there. Cool. Matt, did you have any questions at all? No, sorry, I had a problem with my mic then. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's all right. Not a problem. Well, yeah, good stuff on uh, eighth place this evening. As you say, star P16. Nice, good uh, eight positions gained for another decent points haul. So uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on you coming into that final round and uh, be interesting to see how you do. Looking forward to it. All right, cheers, man. Good night. Okay, let's do one last driver interview, and we shall get the kinky one into the commentary box. Hello, good sir. How do you feel your race went? You finished in P14 in the end. Yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that there, consider, like, uh, considering the first couple of laps. I was just a bit mental at the, at the first couple of laps. Um, I see uh, coming into like the third last corner, I seen Fubara went wide or something happened to him. And he was in the gravel, and then he rejoined, and I tried to give him like space to come back on, and uh, and then Martin was right behind me, and then me and Martin kind of rubbed, and I ended up getting front damage, and I carried that through the whole race. But uh, yeah, considering I had like slightly aero damage, uh, I think I did all right. Like I'm happy enough for that race. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy with me qualifying pace as well. Really happy with qualifying. That's good. Where are you in terms of the championship? Twenty fifth position. You're half a point off the back of Atomic. You will have overtaken Atomic here in yeah. this round. Where are you where are you targeting in in the uh, the overall championship standings? Who are you or what position are you aiming to try and get? Uh well after like the first three races I did it was Atomic and Nat Nat was the, my two targets. And I think I've overtaken them both now after that race, so uh yeah, I'm I'm pretty. I'm, I've reached my target, and my other target was to get a top ten, which I did at Alder. So that's the two ticked off. I'm happy now. Yeah. Well, I know uh, Atomic was watching a little bit of the stream earlier on. Are you relishing the last race fight with him? Uh, yeah. I'm always up for it. Like, why not? Let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing. Uh, I just want to apologise for last week. Last week I said uh, that I was the best, and I let you down. 
<laughs> I wondered where that was going for a second. Uh, I do remember that, but that's that's all right. Uh, 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 well. I, felt, I felt terrible all week, lads. Ah, <laughs> uh, good bit of humour. Well, that's that's okay. I wish we we'll... had that on the stream. In all honesty, yeah, you could have just kept me. You could have had that archived on the internet for eternity. You know that. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, sure. This is it. That's but, good um, stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I, great race. Really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, one more left to go, and let's just bring it home. That's all I, all I can do. Really, just try. It. Like that race it was. Uh, it just did my best to not crash, and that's what I did. You know, so I'm really happy with it. The practice that I put in with Andrex and Fubar and all really helped. Them guys really. Like when I started a couple of days back, I was literally five seconds slower than what I could do in qualifying. Just with a like two days practice, I was able to get five seconds off me lap time, which is, which is really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Well, that's what we like to hear in these uh, leagues: is the other drivers helping each other out and kind of working together to improve the pace and the overall competitiveness. So, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a uh... great, great bunch of lads. I have to say, everybody's great, really friendly. Definitely. Well, you're great too, as well, Kinky uh, One. Even though you let us down last week, uh, well, don't let us down again. No, next week, uh, top three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you, you to that. Here. That's definitely staying yeah. in now. <laughs> yeah. Locked in. Oh, as, uh, what, have, what have I done? There's oh, an artificial Lord. handshake going on here. <laughs> <laughs> the bets are on. But uh, yeah, thanks very much, Kinky One. Uh, really right. enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, good luck next week. That's the job. See you later. Bye. All right. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Right. We'll pretty much round it out there, I think. Uh, I do see Andrex is in the ready for interview room, but he's been talking plenty in the live chat, and uh, we've obviously had plenty of opportunities to talk to him throughout the season. Uh, we'll get a word with him in the final round if he's uh, if he's up for a talk, which I'm sure he is. He always is. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to be it from this evening. Obviously, if you enjoy tonight's racing, please give the live stream a thumbs up and obviously subscribe to the channel. You won't miss won't what you won't want to miss next week's race, the final race of the season where the drivers will be battling out for the championship. It's still very much alive between Dynamite Alive and Strongest Avenger is yet to be settled. And I think Moo has may, may have closed up the gap a little bit, although he's still quite a stretch out of uh, out of the running. So hit that subscribe button with the bell notification. That way you'll be notified next time we go live. Myself and Matt, we have our links to our Twitter and YouTube pages down in the description uh, of the live stream below. Be very much appreciated if you followed us there. But Matt, did you have any final closing words for everyone watching to entice them back for next week? Well, thank you very much to everyone who's joined us tonight. And please do join us next week as we are set up for a grand finale to this AOR GT3 Championship. It's between two drivers, Dynamite Alive and Strongest Avenger. Next week, you do not want to miss it. Absolutely smashed it there. Thank you very much, good sir. Don't have anything else to add. So other than that, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and your week. And we look forward to seeing you back next Wednesday at 8 p.m. British summer time. Until then, though, have fun, stay safe, and take care. <laughs>